high school football coach honored at Washington City's Hot Air Balloon Festival, Iron County's preparation for serious floods, and some tips for hiking Zions National Park this winter. You're watching St. George News at 5. Good afternoon, I'm Christy Langenheim. During the Washington City's Hot Air Balloon Festival, a memorial flight was organized to pay tribute to the freshman football coach at Crimson Cliffs High School, who passed away due to a heart attack on Thanksgiving. Now let's hear more from Chris Reed about how the coach was honored at the festival. Two black balloons were launched into the air as part of a memorial for a local football coach and a veteran hot air balloon pilot at the Up and Away Hot Air Balloon Festival Friday morning at Washington City's Staley Farm. Mike Fox, the freshman football coach at Crimson Cliffs High School, died suddenly last Thanksgiving. A manager at cable company TDS organized a memorial flight for his surviving family. Ten-year-old Coco Fox was especially excited about the flight. Her mother Melanie said she overcame a fear of heights to take the flight, and the trip more than 1,000 feet above St. George proved to be therapeutic. Yeah, I mean, well, we had talked about taking the kids up at a hot air balloon at some point, and the plan was that he was going to take them and I would stay on the ground, <laughs> but um, I'm always thinking about him, always good to just feel him and have him close. And Utah has achieved a 52% reduction in human-caused wildfires over the past three years, with an additional 56% in the following two years through the Fire Sense campaign. Governor Spencer Cox highlighted the impact of the campaign, leading to the award for fire prevention. The latest data shows a significant decline from 1,176 wildfires in 2020 to 288 in 2023. The program involves state and federal leaders with recognition at the Utah State Capitol. In just its third year, FireSense is a nationally and state recognized initiative for best practices in wildlife prevention. Over the last few years, Iron County has had multiple serious floods with sediment and debris impacting its residents and businesses. Here's Alicia Lundgren on Iron County's plan to prepare for the floods to come. The Natural Resources Conservation Service is in the planning stages of multiple flood mitigation projects in Cedar City and Iron County. The Lower Coal Creek Watershed Project would use two to three gravel pits to capture flood water and sediment from Coal Creek to reduce the risk of flooding in the event of a 100-year storm. For the second project, the service would rehabilitate two Greens Lake debris basins at the base of Cedar Mountain on the city's south side. The basins were originally built in 1957 following a 1956 flood. Thanks, Alicia. St. George News reporter Jesse Bang interviewed the owner of an antique shop here in St. George that has gone through some tough times. Here's Jesse Bang with more on the owner and what got him started in the antique business. Jerry Christensen is the owner of Main Street Antiques, a shop he purchased almost 23 years ago. But what many may not know is the tragedy he and his family have endured. While living near Kansas City, Missouri, he and his wife were in a tragic car crash where his wife died and came back. The crash resulted in a traumatic brain injury at a time when the couple had six children, five under the age of 10 years old. Coin collection, I've done, been doing that for about 50 years. Uh, kind of interesting story back when I was about 11, 12 12, 13 years old, uh, in order for me to get my Eagle Scout, if I remember this right, I needed like one more merit badge. So guess what it was? I'm pretty sure it was coin collecting. So ever since that point of my life, I've just loved doing coins and they fascinate me and uh, the beauty and the meaning behind it, who touched them, who had them is kind of a fun thing. The winter months at Zion National Park can provide hikers with beautiful sceneries, but can also be dangerous. Here's Stephanie DeGraw with some safety precautions that you should take if you're planning to visit this winter. Visiting Zion National Park in the winter is breathtaking, but officials say there is some risk. Travelers should always check the weather and wear warm clothing. Park ranger Iris Coastar says pay attention when you're hiking. Ice and icicles also form on the rocks, and as the sun warms the canyon, it's common for ice to fall. Situational awareness is key. Don't linger under icy canyon walls. You do not want to be admiring the view when it all comes falling down. Ranger Coastar advises visitors to use traction devices on shoes to make it less likely to fall on an icy path. 
Thank you for watching St. George News at 5. I'm Christy Langenheim with St. George News, your number one source for local news. This has been St. George News at 5.